All right, beastlings, I'm Moggy and let's bite into Vampire. I'm wearing this scarf because it's a game about vampires and this kind of reminded me of Van Helsing, so <laughs> to fit the team. Let's play. Oh yeah, I'm headed to the docks, which means I can do a lot of side missions because, well, a lot, like two, three on my way there. We love air, Moggy. Air, what? Yes, air is nice. We need to breathe. <laughs> Okay, wait your turn. I was getting up, dude. Can you stop? <laughs> I'm trying to attack him. Can you not bother me? I the buff. Got ya. Interesting. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Did I just accidentally get it? Yeah, I got it. That was the side mission. Okay, I was like, let me just kill these and continue on to see where the side mission is. Let me just rob this place real quick. Oh, hint? Hint? Who are you? I haven't met you yet. That makes sense. Puth has already tried to find a job so he could quit the wet boot boys. Hmm. Hello? Don't forget to keep it. Good evening, miss. Oh, well, I am hi. Dr. Reed. I was gonna talk May to the I guy, actually, but whatever. Who are you? What do you want? I, ju I, just, I just told you! you. Alright, let's go through all the boring stuff real quick. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened, exactly? I don't know, and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard. But he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened. But you executed him anyway. No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Doctor Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. Dude, I wouldn't be so cocky around me. You have 3,000 XP in your blood. I might just kill you. What's going on? What's happening? What's this all about? Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange um, event? There's a body there. More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton. Vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? Really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist. And no, I don't. Close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. Side mission. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple. Do tell. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. They also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever Indeed. killed one of these creatures? Yourself? I mean. Also, oh, of course I have. <laughs> what kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. We give people what they need. And we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere Oof. else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And Edwina says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? Are you, you America? You tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's I'm more sure smart she can. than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Ooh, you like her, do you? 
Booth may be in love with Edwina Cox, but she is the true leader of the gang. All right. Unknown. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Side mission. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience. Appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. This is Braille. I need someone who can read this. I have one already. Interesting. This might end up not too well. You know? Are you all right, sir? What are you doing in a place like this? I'm not sure that's any of your business. I hope you realize that staying here will put your life at great risk. Bah! I'm not afraid of these guards of Prewen, or whatever these thugs call themselves. I can still kick some respect into those youngsters. I wasn't specifically referring to them, but are you really after these men? Why? They took my boy! I've had no news since he joined that crazy gang. So I decided to come and find him myself. Side quest? To get some answers. I see. Okay. But as I oh great, I still need like half. Tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop. There is a name engraved under the blood on the back of the kit. Not that, it's the hint. Jack Gillingham. Maybe oh. I should return this watch to his family. Yes, I should. Come back up here. Oh, no. Oh, I broke through. Now what? This is a slaughterhouse. It's locked. Great. <gasps> Necklace! From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. I mean, I wanted to talk to, but okay, I guess I'll watch on the other side, yeah? No? Then what do you want from me? Okay, I guess I missed it. I didn't know where I had to go stand, so... A little pissed off right now. Hello, boy. Oh, uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. I'm sure. No, it's just that... People prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough? No. I mean, yes, I live on the streets. I have no home. This city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. Yay. Hey, wait a minute. I remember this area. This area equals something bad. Oh, it's the flamethrower guy, that's why. Spot shot. <laughs> that really was a butt shot. Oof. <gasps> you. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps 
with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Seems like the guard of Prewen is on Sean Hampton's trail, too. Can you not? Oh my god, yeah, I'm so dead. Stop it. Oh, yes. I did it! The wounds on this corpse are deep. The result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast. I remember I had a lot of trouble with this fight. And I know exactly why. It's because I... I think I played normal mode compared to the story mode I have right now. Anything? <laughs> That's quite a mess. Oh, hello. <laughs> Quick and easy. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you need any help? Rest assured, I will help you, sir. Martin Nightingale, at your service. Please, take a look at my wares. <laughs> Your merchandise? I don't really see anything worth having. No offense. None taken, sir. But please, I need to eat. Perhaps if you keep looking, you'd see something that takes your fancy. Ah, I can sell it, right? The watch, bring it to a relative, sell it to someone else. I'll bring it to a relative, I think. I know I've got something Good evening, that miss. Fancy. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I come in? I already took my medication, Doctor. Uh, but thank you. I'm sorry, your medication? Have we met before? Don't tease me like that, Jack. Sorry, what? I think I should come in, miss. I'd like to check if everything is okay, what with the epidemic spreading across London. An epidemic, you say? How terrible. I had no idea. But where are my manners? Please do come in, Doctor. You... you are a doctor, yes? So, Dr. Tippett, <laughs> what brings you back here? I heard whispers you had a job at that fancy hospital. I told you my name is Jonathan Reed. Don't you remember? Of course I do. I remember my name too. Gillingham. But you may call me Enid, Doctor. I'm very happy to see you again. Is anyone taking care of you, Miss Gillingham? My son is always here to take care of me. He's a good boy like that, but I do worry that he needs to start living his own life. I would never say that to him, of course. Jack is dead, Miss Gillingham. Of course he's not. I've seen him. Tonight, in fact. Ever the joker, Dr. Tippett. <laughs> I found this watch. It was a gift from you to your boy, wasn't it? I think it should return to you now. Oh, I remember. Yes, I recall the day I offered Jack this watch. Oh, it was such a beautiful day. Thank you, sir. Trinkets and possessions help us remember our past. Promise me you'll not lose it. I would never lose anything that belonged to Jack. Why don't you take this? Dr. Tippett's? Please, for your charity. Well, that's not necessary, but okay. Goodbye, Miss Gillingham. Right, cool. Well, I'll talk to you before you leave. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I have your attention for a minute? Good evening, sir. My name is Giselle Paxton, but I don't have time for men like you. Have we met before? No. But I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite <laughs> judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. You speak of strikes and class enemy. Am I right to assume you're involved in trade union activism? You bet I am. Well, I was. 
Nowadays, I'm just another worker blacklisted by the big companies. Isn't the whole point of trade unions to help workers in need? Why don't they support you? A few nights back, I lost the money my companions had asked me to hide. With me and my sister being penniless, they thought I stole it. What really happened? I drank too much that night. Uh, lost the money of the trade union she belongs to. Strange men Side saw trip? me count the money in that bar. Some sort of militia in uniform. I'm sure they robbed me. Oh! I got them all! Hell yeah, man. I don't think I talk to you. You must be the one in the sewers, right? Oh, you're that far away, are ya? How the hell would I even get there? I think this is a train track. Oh, here. Danger is closer than you think. They are already here. Do not let them take the kingdom. See a vampire seek for help. <laughs> okay. That's, um, that's cute. Oh, choose what to do. Put the posters up, burn all the posters. Mm. It's not like it does much, except people would go talk to him, right? Yeah, I might as well post it up. Informing London's inhabitants of the presence of vampires. What does that make me? A double or a triple agent? <laughs> Done. Mr. Throckmorton should be happy. I put up your public service announcement. Consider the common folk warned about the vampiric presence. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You may not realize it, but you saved a great many lives today. Do you really think they could be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. Ah. Tom has so much alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time. This could be the public house Giselle has to mention. They attacked each other, lol. Giselle's stolen money. Hmm. Everyone has some unethical ways of financing their war. How the hell did it end up here? <laughs> Very interesting. Hi. But it's locked. It's locked, all right. You again? What do you want? I've identified the men who stole from you. You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it! Did you find the money, too? Mm-hmm. Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. I'm... Um, I'm... Well... Thank you. Will you give the money back to your comrades then? Fuck those bastards who fired me. I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. He was killed recently. Do I have to talk to you as well? Glad to see you again, Mr. Reed. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Bye. Goodbye, Miss <laughs> Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it, it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Yeah, I know why. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Ooh, a lot. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. An order to kill. I was an obedient gang member at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? 
So you were ordered to kill someone. What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but I couldn't kill him. I just stood there pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating, drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite, an easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You refused to kill him because you wanted to feel some of that happiness yourself. You empathized with him. Exactly. The man was a bloody landlord who rented overpriced flats. A selfish bastard. But he made me smile. And I was no different from him. Tell me about your arrest for attempted murder, Tom. I tried to kill someone. I got arrested. I paid my debt and I have nothing to hide. Why not leave town and start a new life after you got out of jail? I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it. I believe I have medicine for you. I think. Let's see. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me? That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. I believe you may find this necklace of interest. What is it? I don't understand. It's a gift your son was hoping to give you. But I'm afraid it links him to the nearby murders. You mean this belongs to one of his victims? Jesus. I knew this day would come. Please, Dr. Reed. Accept this for your trouble and leave me be. This day? You mean you already knew? Oof. Are you buying my silence? I will not be an accomplice in this. What? No, no. My son's crimes distress me more than you can imagine. But I'm his mother. I love him, I do. Anything else? Oh. Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night, he told me straight up, in his own words. It was several days after one of his episodes. Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his, uh, demons. Did Seymour tell you everything that night? More than I could stand. The words he used to describe his hate, 
his rage. How he feels when he's done it. I'm really gonna have to go talk to him. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry, he can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? Mm. Science has only just begun to investigate the mysteries of the human mind. Currently, we have more assumptions than fact. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. I won't send my only son to his death. I'll do it. Refuse to send her son Seymour to his death by denouncing him. Um. The situation will only get worse. Someone has to stop Seymour. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times. That's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all. You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. Is that right? Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh, it's quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose, but she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum. I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight. Especially about my mum. Hey, Taryn, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. 